Hello, greetings, welcome everyone. Welcome to Dev Chatter. I want to give a quick update here because uh, I am having a little bit of trouble starting the stream. I don't know how clearly this is coming through. Uh, OBS is reporting that uh, I am dropping frames a significant amount. Uh, it is all on the network, so I lowered the bitrate of the stream, so uh, it is possible that uh, that we're still... Uh, so we should still be dropping a bunch because it's still reporting that, but I figured I'd hop in here instead of leaving you all wondering uh, what was going on. Uh, it's, yeah, so, um, I got it to drop, so I dropped the bitrate by a ton, and it is not dropping as many, but it's still reporting a lot of dropped frames, so, uh, the visuals might not look as good. Uh, the audio I'm hoping will come through, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, either way, welcome everyone, welcome to the stream, hello, I saw Miha and, uh, SNB and Kanlob, uh, showing up in chat and saying hi, so welcome. Uh, and then I also saw Litany follow, so thank you very much for that uh, follow. Always appreciated. Let's take a look. So, a um, couple of updates. If you are new here, welcome. Feel free to ask questions, make suggestions. Uh, conversations totally cool in in the chat room. Uh, you know, keep keep it positive and friendly. But uh, yeah, uh, any anything related to what we're doing that you want to ch chat about in in that room over there, uh, go for it. Uh, so. This channel, we are a live coding channel, so uh, we try to stream a few times a week, and um, most of what we do is C Sharp and JavaScript. Uh, we do a decent amount of things with .NET Core, uh, ASP.NET Core. We're doing a WPF application today. So this is WPF using .NET Core 3, so like the really new cool stuff. Uh, we also have an ASP.NET Core app running inside of it. Uh, welcome, Suna and uh, Average. Greetings, greetings. Um, and the project that we are building is actually one that is designed to uh, interact with another program directly while it is running. So uh, if you have ever heard of the game Final Fantasy VII, uh, that is uh, probably like... I'd assume that's probably the most well-known of the Final Fantasy games, if not the most like played one. Uh, I don't think the other ones ever got beyond it, despite being newer, but maybe they did outsell it. But certainly you have to factor in the time and the number of people playing games, you know, back in the late 90s versus today. So if one did surpass it, I think when you account for that, it's a very, very popular game. Uh, <laughs> so SNB has played the game. Uh, I actually played it back in the 90s, and it is one of my favorite games. It is very, um, uh, it was a very impactful game from the time, and as such, it is actually getting a a full remake by the developers that originally created it. So uh, they are redoing that game as a modern game, uh, telling the same story that the original one did, and trying to keep roughly to the same theme and 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 tone, I think, is, is what they're going for. Uh, so if you've never seen the game, uh, this is what the game looks like. Uh, so you run around with these little characters, uh, you can bump into save points, open up menus, it's, it's an old turn-based JRPG, and one of the cool things that we made that um, is really neat, let's go ahead, you know, let's, let's run our program. So this is the code we're working on today. This uh, is a program that we just call Interactive 7 right now because it adds interactivity to Final Fantasy 7 and uh, you probably see Suna Mods typing in uh, menu random right there uh, to attempt to change this menu color which he has not successfully done yet um, did I catch a breakpoint? oh hang on I was in the middle of something uh, and I apparently oh crap uh, that one's using that port number let's change our port number um change that in here um web app project to that um how do i change that to be the port number that we use um uh i don't remember so give me one second because i forget exactly how to do that uh change development uh, port number Aspnet core. Change the port number. Yeah. 
Because I thought it was there, but I but because we're running it in a weird way, yeah, okay, that's the one. I think I can do this. Uh, and, and get away with, with doing this. Um, where do we build our host? Our host. So we're not a standard app. I should explain this. Uh, we don't run our web server the way that ASP.NET Core normally would. So normally you'd build a console application and you'd run it out of that. And then essentially what happens is that when you publish it, you build it as an app that gets run by uh, another service like either IIS or something, or it runs out of its own. It's up to you. Uh, hey, Copper Beardy, welcome. Uh, and um, we didn't do that because we want to be a WPF app that people can just run. And then uh, because they're running a WPF app, uh, you know, it's just a standard GUI application. They're running in Windows. But we also want it to expose a web browser. And this is what allows the second piece. So we integrated in another project created by another developer uh, called Mr. Shoji. He's frequently in our chat. And Mr. Shoji built a like front-end display UI for a Final Fantasy VII streamer. And we kind of said, wait a minute, we're accessing all the same data. Why don't we just combine forces and build this as one big project? So that's the route we took with this. Uh, where do we do our host? Right here. So there's host and we said, oh, can I not, uh, can I not just do a use URLs? No, I can't. Uh, is that on the web host builder? Hang on. That might be on the web host builder. Yeah, okay, so it goes here. Put it in the wrong place, uh, so we want to use it there. Okay, that might have switched it. Might. Uh, and oh, I didn't want it on 80. Why did I leave it on 80? 80 is a terrible choice for that. <laughs> uh, but we'll see if it, if it blows up or not. Uh, yeah. That makes sense. It might not want us using that port. So we'll make it 7777, which maybe it'll let me use that port. So other parts of the system might have blocked me from using port 80, and so uh, that's pretty normal. Hang on. Uh, I left a breakpoint here. Uh, so I've been doing a little bit of changing to our code since we last ran this, but I'm going to show you how it works. So this is our WPF app. Uh, it's just kind of thrown together. We didn't really like try to design it. We just started putting stuff in to make the program work. Uh, but when I click connect, it'll connect into the chat and you'll see it sends a message in there saying that it is live. And the cool thing about that is that we are now pulling this game for its data and doing a couple of other cool things as well. So let me go ahead and localhost. Um, is it status? Uh, well, maybe the site's running. I thought it would be. See, I'm uh, trying to connect to it. Let me see. What did we call it? HBS star on 777. What is our page called? Oh, S and B. Uh, did ooh, did that not go? Oh, we're not apparently connected. All right, I need to get a uh, I need to get a debugger in there and figure out what's going on. So this apparently didn't load quite right uh, with these. Oh, you haven't seen Rainbow Live. Well, we'll run it a little bit. Either way, um, there's something else that I want to suggest that you do because it's kind of cool. Uh, so we did this on a previous stream, um, and this should just work. So uh, Sunamods, just tr put in any color name. Literally is the only thing in your message. So if you watch the overlay on my stream right now, those little colors, you can literally just type in any any color you want as the only thing you put in, 
and it will just change those just on the fly so you actually have full control over the the colors of that while it's going so that's the uh, that's the color switcher that we that we built uh, so it actually just switches up the colors uh, and it does that to a, a, a an HTML page so that's very similar to what we are doing uh, with interactive 7 uh, then I need to track down the two problems here the first one why our website isn't working which for now, let's just make this localhost, so it definitely, uh, so so that's removed as a potential issue. Um, and then I need to read the debug log while it's running, but I want to pull up the rainbow command. I should have tried another command now that I think about it while we were in there just to see, was it just rainbow failing, or is it like any of them that were failing? So we'll put that in here, um, and run this. So it definitely connected in and said hi in the chat. Let's see what go. Let's see what's going on though. So we'll do a little bit of debugging in this before we see the um, uh, before we actually start our refactoring. So today uh, I want to do a little bit of refactoring because we have been bringing these two applications together, uh, and it uh, I started it as you'll see as two separate things. So I actually put most of Seng just in its own library. And then we're slowly shifting them to basically be the same thing. So Seng only concerns will still live in here, I think, in the long run. Uh, but we're trying to bring them together so they can share a lot of the assets that they use. Uh, because these two programs are very similar. So let's go ahead and connect the chat. And we see it there. And let's try... Uh, oh, wait, no. Um, uh, derp. It is just rainbow. That's why. It's not menu rainbow. It is rainbow. Um... Wait, what? Edits, edits were made? What? Continue? Stop. Okay, hang on. <laughs> Apparently I hit a key in here or something. Because it thought I made changes while this was debugging, which I don't think I did. But maybe I did. I might have accidentally hit a key. That is totally possible. I would do that kind of thing. Pressing keys on my keyboard? What kind of crazy person does that? All right. Let's try this again with the correct command. So, first off... Okay, there it goes. So those do transition. Suna, you here? I hope you are. Um, exclamation point, rainbow. Wow, rain okay, so maybe... I didn't... Oh, rainbow is going. I just didn't have it selected. So this is rainbow mode in the game. Uh, so, yeah. There it goes. So it, it just is going. Uh, hey, Ancient Coder, welcome, greetings. Uh, and the cool part is, it'll do this for a while. So this this runs for minutes, so you can actually go in and, and be playing the game and watch these dialogue boxes as they appear. Notice even these conversation dialogue boxes, all the colors are changing while we do this. So the whole time you're playing, you just have rainbow mode going. Uh... Yes, Suna. It also it, it does a slow transition from one color to another. Uh, so and um, so even when we get in here, as soon as this combat starts, you'll notice that the menus are still doing that transition the whole time. So uh, if you turned on rainbow mode, we could just make this a permanent mode during the game where it is always doing this. So if you if you really are a fan of rainbow mode. Uh, you could configure it so that when you start rainbow mode, it just stays in rainbow mode. Uh, the interesting thing about this is uh, any additional commands that are queued up while this is going will run at the end. So what that means is that if I say uh, switch from default to Brendan to default to Brendan to default to Brendan, so these are some named palettes that we have. Uh, and, and those are special sets of colors that have names that people can request specifically, and, and the stream can actually uh, create their own uh, palettes, which is some of the code that we wrote for this. When it completes rainbow mode, it is actually going to start switching back and forth uh, between a, a red and black design and a mostly blue design. Uh, and that's actually what's going to happen because we've actually queued those up. So this is rainbow mode. It's very cool. The real uh, awesome thing that we did with this is actually not just this color transitioning that you're seeing here. It is actually 
uh, when we tie in Seng, which I mentioned was an overlay for streamers. Now, the way that that works is essentially it is just a web page that the streamer puts over their stream. So I actually have a bunch of web pages that are being displayed and their backgrounds are just transparent. So for example, these colored lights that are around me over here, uh, I think rainbow mode goes for a couple of minutes uh, in its current version, uh, Suna. So um, I forget how many minutes. It might be like two, it might be three, um, but it does go for a while. I didn't trigger it twice, did I? We triggered it twice that would be crazy um yeah it should be wrapping up soon i think uh either way um the what was i saying um so the way that it works is uh even my overlay here is actually just a web page that is stretched to take up the full width of the screen up here uh, and, and just display it. Ah, here we go. So that was the Brendan color. This is the default. And then it switches back to the Brendan color. And then it switches back to the default. And then it changes again. And so you see, I actually had all those queued up. So anyone that put in another menu color while the rainbow is still going, it's just waiting to get to the next one. So uh, we do wait for the previous one to switch it. Uh, now we haven't put it in yet, but we could, con for example, configure that so that there's always a 30 second gap after one is, is done. That way, someone that does change the menu color at least gets to maintain it for 30 seconds. Uh, so we could do some things like that. Uh, is it possible to have chat stop it on a command or will it have to finish its cycle? Uh, we could easily add a thing to rainbow mode that allowed it to end early. Uh, if you wanted to, we could make a command that would just stop it, but there is not currently any way to stop rainbow mode. Uh, so it just kind of goes. But this is some of the cool stuff that we built in this. Uh, so let's see if I can't get that other bit running. Um, so I mentioned that I wanted to see the uh, output window. Uh, so for anyone that's not used to doing a lot of debugging in Visual Studio, um, I want to hit the web page that we were trying to get to a bit ago. We'll say this one. And we'll check and see, aha, we did get some kind of a thing. So it definitely understood that we went to this page because we can see that um, uh, ASP.NET and uh, ASP.NET Core, I should say, and um, Kestrel responded. Uh, what was the exception loaded? That uh, exception thrown, bad HTTP request. Okay, so where actually are these web pages? Did I make them as views? I did. Uh, and it was status. Okay, so slash status. So this is where the page should be. It should be at that slash status. Uh, but why did it do the object disposed exception in the sockets? What? That's just a standard connection. this whole protocol error um oh do i have oh i think i have uh i think i turned off um ssl for this that's the problem okay either way that so that does work now so here we go now for the cool show so this is actually what we've been working on this is the neat thing uh prepare for mind-blowing craziness uh so if you were, imagine you were playing this game and the streamer has that up on the side of their, their screen and then they've got the game shoved into the side section, roughly where my game is, but um, with, with better spacing than, than this because uh, they're using this menu instead of like my sidebar over there. Okay, let's change the colors. So, and, and check that out. So, it actually transitions both of those at the same time. And you can actually see the colors change, uh, and they both blend. So what that means is, if you're playing the game and someone and you're using this overlay, and someone changes your menu colors, you're actually going to see your game and your side panels change at the same time, which is really cool. Uh, it just looks so nice to see that happen when those transitions go. Suna, if you're if you're there, you need to be watching right now, because this is the this is the crazy. Because you can also do this. You can trigger rainbow mode and watch as they do this. So 
The way that we're doing this, for anyone that is wondering, like, how did you get a web page and a, a game to actually transition these things at the same time? And the short answer is, that is wired up using SignalR, which makes a WebSocket connection to our WPF app that has that server running in it on port 777. So what's going on is, every time before we write to the Final Fantasy game and give it a new color, we also tell, uh, through our socket connection, we tell that web page to update as well. And that is actually just blended using its own CSS styling uh, that was set up by Mr. Shoji, who we mentioned earlier, was building this piece that's above me. And uh, you can actually see they transition at the same time. You'll notice that the characters all have, you know, equipment based on that. Um, use one of the... Um, Hang on, the, the game's going to stop transitioning while I click out of that window, so you'll still see the other one going. Uh, but I could do something like uh, Weapon Cloud um, 10. So when I do this, watch in, uh, in the panel above me. Notice that uh, Cloud is equipped with the Nail Bat. You'll see it every once in a while right here. It'll say Nail Bat. Uh, but then if I say exclamation point Weapon Cloud uh, 0 you'll see that he's now equipped with a buster sword. And so that's the piece that Seng built, is, is this uh, up above me is actually pulling the game constantly to check and see what that data is. Now, what we're gonna try to do with his game, uh, with, with, with uh, this piece that he's got here, is we're gonna try to uh, get it so that it's refreshing data only on this screen as parts change. So the plan is, to try and limit how frequently we tell this about changes because that's just extra work that we don't necessarily need to do. So the plan is to not check uh, certain things as frequently. So um, character names, for example. Uh, let's rename one of the characters. Uh, thank you, Zultralord. Glad, glad you like what we're doing here. Um, Cloud, Brendan, So Cloud has been renamed Brendan. Notice that both the overlay and the game have now changed the character name because we also built into our program that you can pay bits in order to change the name of a character in the game. So Cloud has had his name updated to Brendan. And again, this program updated immediately. And the reason is that it is actually checking like every single second for updates, which is fine. It's like, it's a quick little check. It's a small amount of memory. It's really not that hard to do it. But what we want to change is we still want some things to check that frequently, like the character's hit points and things like that. Uh, but we've got some ways that we want to do that. We really only want to check the hit points frequently when we're in combat and we'll know when the characters are in combat because there's an indicator we can check. So essentially what we wanna do is we wanna change it so we're maybe checking every five seconds or 10 seconds against the game's memory to say like, hey, are you in combat now? And the reason that we wanna do that is that we can actually just not quite as frequently ping every single thing and process all the data. Because while it doesn't take that much resource to do it, um, let me pull it up and have a look uh, at, at how busy this, this little program is. Uh, let's see, it is using 0% of my CPU, it says. Is that actually accurate? Uh, core host, yeah, 0% there. Is it using any of it? Uh, Oh, I should kill that. That shouldn't be going. That's funny. I'm looking at all my processes right now. <laughs> yeah, so either way, the point being that it actually runs pretty darn well. Uh, so that is uh, essentially what we've been building. Let's go ahead and... Um... Wait, what? Oh, right. That's so funny. Hang on. Really? Uh, okay, so hang on. Uh, we don't need that there right now. Let's load up a menu so we're just sitting on that. I'm gonna get this out of the way. Uh, so this I'm also gonna move, but that's the program running. So it does pretty darn well, I think. 
Um, so let's let's go ahead and close that. Um, close that as well. Uh, so we want that uh, that value I just changed. We're going to want that to be configurable, so it's not just like hard coded in there the way that I did it, because uh, that's not ideal. We we don't want them using that, but it's not the worst thing. Uh, so force uh, you uh, URL to um... oh maybe it's because I just typed in HTTP instead of HTTPS here. Maybe I could have used SSL the whole time if I'd done that. Either way, uh, force URL to uh, port uh, four sevens. Okay, so let's actually dive into code. So we've seen the cool stuff we're building. Let's actually work on it a little bit. Okay, so how's it structured? We have a few projects. This is the main WPF project here. This is uh, where the core of the application is. This contains all concerns that are the connection to Twitch itself. Um, this is the web application that we're using to host Seng. Uh, so it's a very simple just web app. And uh, I do want to point out that this runs through WPF. This is not a separate running website. You can tell because it throws an exception if you try to run it. So we really, really do not want you to run this because that's the wrong way to, to execute this code. So no, no running that program. If you run that executable, it's just going to yell at you and be like, hey, don't run this here. Run it through Interactive 7. Uh, and then the last thing here is the Seng project, and we've got some unit tests down there uh, as well, which uh, I'm currently not running because the addition of Seng, uh, Seng and uh, Seng doesn't play well with unit tests right now. So in, until we we get it so that it will uh, I wanted to bring it in first uh, because then we could all start working on the same project what I didn't want to have happen is like for us to keep working on i7 and for Mr. Shoji to keep working on Seng we just said hey the sooner we can bring these projects together the sooner we can work in the same place and we don't just keep deviating uh, from each other because uh, what uh, what we saw happening was we're writing all the same stuff because both of these programs actually interact directly with memory so uh, let's take a look at all that. Uh, so let's close all the documents for now, and let's jump into Seng. So the way that this code works, so this used to be a, um, this this code here actually used to be the program.cs of a project that was Seng. And in it, the um, it had its own main and everything like that, but we have been uh, so we switched it so it wouldn't be so that it could just run inside of interactive 7 uh, and then we've been pulling out some of this data as we go uh, I've been leaving to do's as we try to get data out of here as well so um, there are shared bits of information uh, and other things like that that we need to deal with so I just switched everything to using a logger uh, this is uh, where it searches to set up the process uh, and it starts monitoring the game here. So let's start pulling out some settings so that we don't just have numbers uh, scattered in here. So uh, if you're ever wondering how do I how do I get these settings out, there are a number of ways depending on your circumstances and how you set things up. Uh, one of the quick ways, if you're thinking about it, is to uh, just extract them immediately to a constant. So if you pull them out as a constant, you, what you can then do is take that constant and pull that into a, uh, a settings file uh, because you were already referencing it separately then. So it makes it's a good um, intermediate step. Uh, so um, that, oh, that's hilarious. It's actually, so I said it was checking it every second. That's not true. It's checking it every half second. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, let's call this, so this is not an, in, it's not in, I mean, it is an interval, but it's, um, um, actually, I'm looking at that code and I'm wondering about something, which I'm going to have to check in a second. Um, interval, this is the, um, Uh, we'll call it the general check inter, um, 
Uh, memory, uh, memory read, uh, interval in milliseconds. I think I can get away with doing MS as milliseconds. And uh, OBS is still detecting dropped frames, which is quite crazy. Let's look for some others. Uh, con yeah, Conlob, I totally agree. Uh, naming things is so difficult. Okay, so this is it here. It is memory uh, read interval in milliseconds. Let's go ahead and start making some uh, Seng settings in our application settings. So we're gonna jump over to our application core and we're gonna open up settings, of which we actually have a lot of settings for this code. Um, so we'll just make it Seng settings for now because I don't have a better name and, and why not call the overlay Seng? That's what this was already called. Uh, so I am good with that. Um, observable settings base, that's what I called it. Observable settings base. So I wrote a little base class for our settings that uh, have property changed on them. Uh, because I thought it would be useful for all settings to have uh, property change triggers on them, just in case anything needs to uh, actually update and respond to a property changed event. Um, let me save that. Actually, let me just pull this for now. We'll just pull that in. Um, Uh, nope, that was a bad one to look at. Actually, I just realized uh, I want to look at menu color. Yeah, this one's not bad, so we'll grab this. Uh, so we're not going to do enabled. This is going to be an integer, and it is going to be called uh, memory read interval, and then this is going to be memory read interval in milliseconds, like this. It will not be a constant, it's going to be a private int with that value, and boom, now we have a setting. So I'm not kidding, that is that is literally it. We now have a setting, it's not displayed anywhere yet. We need to either add this to a view or come up with a way of having a view that's gonna automatically generate uh, fields for our settings. I haven't decided on that one. If someone knows a good WPF tool that'll do that, uh, I would love to hear about it, even if it is from one of the uh, companies, like a maybe Dev Express makes it, maybe maybe Telerik makes one. Uh, I'm not sure who has one, but I am sure someone makes one somewhere. Uh, okay, let's close that. We don't need it. And dink. Jump down here and say. Do I have settings? No, I didn't make settings available. Okay, so we're gonna say settings dot sing settings, and then that. Okay, so settings needs to exist, and we have access to that, so I'm actually gonna make that a private property. And the way we're gonna get that is we're gonna say private uh, application settings, so I made an application settings. We are gonna make this property name settings and we are actually just going to ac access that like so. Then let's head into the actual application settings class because it does not yet have its Seng settings, which we just added. So we're gonna say property Seng settings Seng settings equals new Seng settings. So uh, if you haven't seen what we're doing right now, this is called an auto property. Uh, so uh, right here, so this is uh, a C sharp feature that you've seen since like C sharp three something, C sharp four, somewhere around there. Uh, and the next part is we did a property initializer here. Uh, so we, we we did an auto, I should say, auto properly, auto property initializer here, uh, which means we set this value so it would never be null. Uh, so it's automatically set uh, at, at creation. The backing field that we don't have access to uh, does automatically get this value. Hey Rex, welcome. And um, that actually is just a little bit of safety there for us. 
So now that value should exist, should be usable, and we should be able to build and run our application. And that is extraction of our first value, and we now have Seng settings, and we can now start pulling all the rest of them out as well. Uh, so I will show a couple of the other uh, cool little refactorings that we did along the way. Uh, I extracted out... Um, so there is code that we use in order to make a connection to the Final Fantasy VII process. So uh, stick around, uh, Rex, if you if you uh, are going to at all. Wait, what? Hang on. What? Um. try that again sounds good I, uh, I want to show you the thing that we're doing right now because it's crazy cool uh, okay so we've got that here we go uh, so we will connect this to chat so now let's go ahead and load up um, this as well so there is Seng running next to our game, right there. Uh, so well, let's just do this. So this will reset us back to the default colors. Oh, uh, thank you, uh, Copper Beauty. <laughs> yeah, so uh, chat has control of the menu at this point, and we can just change it based on these values, which is the really cool thing, uh, because it also gets that. So that's designed to be uh, an overlay that a streamer would use. Uh, so that's the cool part. Um, and uh, Rex, I don't think you've seen this yet. This is the other thing I was going to mention. So if you're watching around my stream, see that little, whoops, up there, that green bar that's along the top of the screen? Um, that, uh, that definitely green bar. It is absolutely green. Definitely, definitely green. Um, I don't know what you're talking about uh, when you mention a magenta bar. Uh, it's always been magenta. It was never green. I don't know what you're talking about. That's just crazy talk to think that you would see any color other than the yellow bar that is clearly there and has been there the whole time. I don't know, I don't know what kinds of uh, absurd statements you've been making uh, because I absolutely remember that that is uh, a uh, that that was there was a fuchsia line the entire time it was clearly fuchsia you can tell it was never any other color also did I mention that that um, my greatest achievement uh, in my entire life is the ability to, to spell the, the color fuchsia um, clearly making me you know, one of only a handful of people on the planet that could just spell that color. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, it's, it's an absurd color that, like, that, that spelling and, and pronouncing that fuchsia is absolutely ridiculous in the English language. Um, but either way, yes. Uh, so there's cool stuff. So it's neat because I, I both built this into our own stream and then also integrated it into a game. And that's actually the really cool part is the game integration, not the... Oh, the stream integration. Ooh, that looks nice. Also, uh, Suna, are you still here? Suna better be here. Because this one is just crazy. Right here. This is just fun. This is called Mako Mode. And uh, it's it's so subtle, you almost, you almost question sometimes whether... Uh, hey, Renee. Uh, yeah, that is lovely pink that, that my, my stream has now. Uh, you almost you almost look at this and you wonder is that moving is it like and you can't tell if mako modes actually go like and it sort of is because it's supposed to be like this light glowing of this mako effect or mako if you prefer um but it's really neat because it's like it's almost glowing uh in this coloring so it's really cool and it does it over here too so it's really really fun Yep, it's definitely still going, because the menu random hasn't triggered yet. I know, doesn't it, Rex? Doesn't it? <laughs> I want to stream Final Fantasy VII now after building this stuff. 
because uh, it's it's neat. Okay, um, but we're gonna stop that. Nice part is you can still change the stream colors because um, even even though Renee made us pink, you don't have to keep the pink. You could do uh, orange red, and it will make it a nice orange red color. See, it's nice orange red. Uh, yes, soon. I, I think I might stream it at some point, but yes, Cyan works too. Uh, so you see what I, you see what I mean, Suna? Isn't that nice? Like, ha handles any color, just transition as you go. Um, we gotta figure out how to do that with, uh, more complex animations as well. Um, which is something I want to dig into. Uh, but haven't done yet. So let's go ahead and see what else we can yank out of here. Uh, so this, right here. Uh, this works. This is the time handling that it does for the game, but... We have this, it's a total number of seconds, so let's change how we're building this. So, here's what uh, Mr. Shoji did, which is a great solution. Like, if you didn't think of using time span, this is exactly what you want to do. You take the total number of seconds, you divide by the quantities that you want. Uh, so in this one, he grabs the time, divides by this to get the number of hours, uh, and then he just takes the time and he says, hey, you know what, let's take the time and... We are going to get the remainder after the hours, so that's how many minutes are left. Uh, and then uh, you're going to divide by 60, and then, uh, you know, because it's seconds, so that's, you know, divide by that to get the amount of seconds left, and then you go over here and you're like, oh, hey, hang on. Now what's the actual remainder on this? So, works out nicely. So this is, I should specify, this gets you the number of, so this first one's the number of hours, and then this is the number of seconds beyond the hour that you divide by 60 to get the number of minutes. And then this is just the remaining number of seconds. So how many extra seconds is a perfectly good solution to this. Uh, but um, I happen to know that time span can do the same thing. So it seems silly to not just use time span and display a time span instead. Uh, because I think you can just uh, wait. Why is that yelling at us? What's that? Oh, oh, just that we didn't use the return value. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I was like, what are you yelling at us about? Um, uh, if you want to check out complex animations, check out Code Rushed. Yes, Renee, that is absolutely correct. Uh, so I had talked with Mark a, a long time ago uh, about um, grabbing his uh, hue stuff to be able to do some animations with hue color changing. Uh, so, um, and he pointed me at what I should grab out of, uh, his program in order to do that same thing. Uh, I just need to get around to doing it. Uh, so yes, uh, Renee is correct. You should absolutely be watching Code Rush because it is fantastic. Uh, so I am, uh, whoops, dang it. Um, not that one, broken, that one. I can type, uh, that one. Uh, because Mark's stuff is fantastic. Uh, so this is going to be, um, you know what, I need a time span format, um, so I'm going to quickly Google for that, um, C sharp time span uh, format string, because I want to confirm that we get the correct one, because um, I could just take hours and just display the hours, um, So we're not going to have days, but we'll have hours, uh, minutes, and seconds. So it'd be like this. Um, nope, I sh that already has the escaped characters in it, actually. Uh, so we'll say var t equals, and I kind of want to change that text, but... Uh, there we go. Either way, I think that's the same thing. Hours, minutes, and seconds. And I think because I did both, I think it's going to zero, zero them all. Uh, but let me... Did I leave that up? No, I didn't. Um, why didn't I leave that up? That was silly. Good job, Brendan. All right. Let's see if this code runs the same way. With all the fanfare, you could make a movie uh, short if you put them in a good order. Oh, absolutely, Copper Beardy. Uh, as I pointed out, uh, in, in Mark's stream, after my dinosaurs go running through, 
and uh, fertilize that area, your fanfare runs perfectly at that point. Uh, but it is highly critical that mine go in there first, because if not, those dinosaurs are going to trample your, your lovely little plants, and that would just be a travesty. So... Um... Was a uh, oh right I was gonna load up this and refresh. So there's our time zero five one one uh, and I think he was forcing that before wasn't he? Number so it displayed always as two digits with zeros uh, regardless of whether you needed it. I think so. So time time definitely goes there so that works. Actually, I'm going to do this so you can see them both. Yep, timer's ticking away. That's that one and that one. Uh, I should mention, so we also built some other cool things. Uh, so I'm going to do this now because it's funny. Um, the popper command... Oh, I didn't click the connect button. Oh, no, I did, apparently. There we go. So, you might have noticed that uh, all the money went away and we're down to two gills. So the popper command actually takes away all of your character's equipment and items and gill materia, everything, and you're basically just shut down. Um, it is a really, really evil command. Um, if you're not the streamer or a moderator, it costs you a lot of biddies to do that. So, uh, you do essentially pay the streamer for the uh, suffering that you are going to inflict upon them uh, by running that command. Okay, um, now what I'm not sure about is why this didn't pull the correct color. Oh, never mind, I think I pulled that code out. We need to put that code back in. We temporarily pulled it out to confirm that our other code was working. But I think we need to put that back in, so... Either way, that seems to work. Use a time span here. Yeah, I did. That's way easy. Uh, sorry, Rex, I uh, I just closed everything, so that won't work anymore. Uh, you can still change the colors around the stream, though. Uh, so if you really want to, you could just, you know, go uh, red. Okay. And uh, I should mention something else that's cool about the overlay that we do here. Um, that is also uh, running as a simple application that you just run as an executable. Uh, the cool thing is it's actually down in my system tray right now. So you can't see it, but in my system tray, down, down in the lower right-hand corner of my screen, uh, there is a little dev chatter icon that is the, the, uh, that is the application that is running the overlay uh, and making the connection to allow chat to change the color. Okay, um, skip empty party members. Um, so some of this is the processing stuff I don't want to have in here. So, all right, so let's talk about organizing code. So this is the Seng program right here, and it just has a bunch of stuff in it right now. I kind of want to extract out the code that um, processes the memory. So here is essentially how this code's working today. Um, inside of the, um, well, let's just find addresses in here. Whoa, not entire solution, just this document, please. Uh, so right here, uh, in the timer elapsed method, which I want to change that name to, um, we have this right here. So this reads the memory of that game, and this first one is actually going to read the entirety of the, uh, you know, save map. And essentially the way that Final Fantasy VII stores its memory is this. Um, it has a big chunk of the memory that it's just using as, like, in-game stuff for displaying and doing things. Uh, and then a section of the memory is actually the stuff that gets saved between runs of the game. 
So when you save your game, it takes that whole big chunk of memory and it shoves that into the save file. So anything that's in there, anything that's in that section is getting saved. Anything that's not in that section is not getting saved. So what that means is um, things like uh, the names of the characters that can change needs to get saved. Uh, things like the colors that the player has selected for the menu is inside of the, the saves. The levels of the character, their, their HP amounts, all of that is inside of that section. And if we take a look um, here inside of our little memory address stuff, uh, we have the starting location of where in the game that data, that where in the game's memory that data is saved. And that starts at this memory address and uh, it is this big, so that is how many bytes it is. So when we do our read memory, we're basically saying, hey, go ahead and read, you know, that 4,000 some bytes of data every single time. Uh, yes, Fuel Snable, that is a way to persist state pretty effectively. Uh, if you just keep a big chunk that's like this is the persistent part and you make sure you always store it that way it makes it really easy to save and load a game uh, it is way better than like trying to like piece out where each thing goes and hope that you reloaded everything correctly and saved everything you need it's an easy thing to just say here's the section that gets saved when this reloads you know that's what goes in there um, there's also a little check that we do to determine whether or not uh, we're in a battle. Now, I need to talk to Mr. Shoji about that because he and I are checking different values to determine whether we're in combat, and I want to figure out which value he's checking and which value I'm checking uh, to see which one we should use going forward because we should probably determine it the same way. Uh, but we currently are not. Uh, battle map byte data uh, is... Uh, like data for currently what's going on in in combat so huh. excuse me and this is reading of the menu colors now here is the weird part when you change the menu color in the game so I should point out, because a lot of people might not know this, so we are changing the menu color in the game. However, the game actually already had the ability to do some of this. So like, this is a thing, right? Like, I can, I can change these colors. And, you know, the game now has a new set of colors it's using. And that's, like, kind of nice that this game had this built in. Uh, because that's actually what let us so easily get away with doing our color changing. We didn't have to create an image and put it up there, which, uh, to be honest, uh, is something I want to try for other games as well, but we could sort of leverage what they'd already built. Now, what that means is they're changing these values. Now, the strange part is they're saving these menu colors both in the save map for what the menu color is supposed to be, but they're also ha they also have it somewhere else for when it displays. So it actually means that this is in there twice. So, you know. Um, either way, uh, it's, it's in there twice. And so this is actually reading from the display section, not from the save section. Uh, and then this last part, uh, update status from map. This basically rips out all of the data from those big chunks of data that we pulled. So this is um, this is all of the stuff that we yank out of there. So let's jump to... I really... Uh, I want to fix the name Timer Elapsed because that doesn't really say it. Like, that is the event that we're handling, but since we put real code here, I don't want this to just be the event. Uh, or I want to take this and put it somewhere else because it's strange to do it this way. Do we even use E anywhere? No, we didn't even use the event args at all. Because uh, why would we? It really isn't a thing. Um, so, rename. What do we want to rename this? Read all data. Um, uh, 
Yeah, re re read all um <clears throat> read all game data maybe? I think that's a reasonable change. So we'll do read all game data. Um confirm if this um needs to run or if start starts it to do so while I'm doing this kind of work I like to drop these little to do's as reminders of things that I still need to dig into uh, while we're working on this that's not meant as like future task where you'd want to create an issue or a card or a, a story or whatever it is in your uh, tracking system when you're developing uh, but for little things you want to make note of uh, like little questions you can put these in here and what I do is before I merge in the code I search for any newly created to do's uh, so that I can make sure that I've gotten them all before we merge it in so before you send your pull request check all your to do's uh, and you could still send the to do in there um, I'm not against them being in there but uh, you want to be careful that you don't run away and, and create too many of them it's a uh, an easy thing to do okay um, so what did we do in here we said save map window color top left window color top right ah so this adds the colors to the save map file pulled them from the colors um, what do we want to do with that do we want to actually manipulate these colors or not? So we need to pull them sometimes. That's absolutely true. The question is, do we actually want to put it on the save map like that? Oh man, does this do what I think it does? Holy cow! It is just stored as a byte a byte array on here, and then uh, he really is just mapping them as you go. Is that what the public properties do? Do they just check it based on the? Oh yeah, they do. That is awesome. So it just says go to the map and grab the index uh, of the correct one. Huh. That's really cool. Oh, that's so funny. Wait, wait, what? Hang on, wait, what? 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 Wait a minute. Wait, it has it in hours, minutes, and seconds, and we convert it all to seconds, and then we switch it back. It had it in that. Um, this isn't getting you. Where did the other one pull it from then? Mr. Shoji, I'm confused. Live total seconds. Field total seconds. Wait, hang on. Um. Okay, so this one's actually used. Wait, hang on. Number of... Ah, okay. Number of seconds played. Uh, okay. Never mind. They have... So they have both. Uh, they do have both in there. I was just confused there for a minute. But this is here. 
Why, why do we have both, and why aren't we using the other one? I'm so confused by that. Aldrayon, sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have a, I have a toddler, so I am perpetually tired. <gasps> ha ha! He has these also. <laughs> I am planning on do, doing so many fun things with this. Uh... Oh uh, yeah, he has all the stuff that we're planning on doing. All the stuff. Okay, I'm a little confused by that. But I'm fine sticking with live total seconds. Um, yeah, pudding. I didn't put all the memory addresses in that we're not using. I have those in a separate file. Uh, so anybody that's been following this for a while might have noticed that I've got files that I have not been committing, and those are actually files that have little bits of memory research that I've been doing uh, to help us track down where, where things go. Uh, so we'll call this um, uh, extracting... Um, Settings and basic, um, simple refactoring uh, and extracting sing settings. So there we go. No longer hard coded is now in a settings file. Um, let's take a look at. Let's find some other magic strings in here. So these, um, I think we can use our code for this. I think we can make him leverage ours for that, because we already wrote a thing that did that. Um, So that's our settings, that's our memory reader. Um, so the trick is that he needs a couple of things that we don't handle, which is Young Cloud and Sephiroth. We don't really do those yet. We don't have those. Um, it's not a thing in ours. Model, address. Here's diagnostics, which has memory and the process connector. Basic view models, uh, that's the workload stuff. Letter mapping, this needs to move. Letter mapping is going inside of the Final Fantasy folder. And we're gonna do a quick rename of this. Um, uh, by rename I mean rename space. Uh, and then after I do that rename spacing, I run this uh, project cleanup. Uh, and the reason I do that is it'll go through and it will remove unused using statements and reorder them uh, so that they're always in alphabetical order. And that is a nice little trick because when you do a namespace rename, sometimes it leaves you with uh, additional namespaces that you're no longer needing. Uh, so that'll clean them up uh, if you did go that route. Uh, so we can get rid of that. Um, I changed everything byte count of 10. Really? Am I using this? Exactly, Pudding. Uh, I keep all the usings in alphabetical order because it's just easier to read. Really? Oh, 
Really? I thought I didn't allow this. I now need to check. I might have done something I didn't think I did. FF7 bytes to string map string to FF7 bytes. I need to put a breakpoint here. Um. Uh, you keep your methods in alphabetical order. I don't do that. Uh, hey, Plutonin, welcome. Greetings. Um, I guess you could. It might help people find them. Um, I usually find methods by by searching for them based on the symbol name. Oh, uh, right. That's going to run uh, because I had a name change. It was a non-standard name change, so the game actually goes... So when we start this... Uh, exactly, as Renee mentions, uh, I use I use Resharper for it. Frames? Uh, Plutonin, uh, I am dropping frames if that's what you're wondering about. We've been dropping frames this whole stream, so uh, if that's what you mean by frames, uh, that's why it's been messing up this whole time. Uh, I have not been able to get it in good state, so uh, there we go. So this is the starting point. Let's check this. Um, cloud? X dash soldier. Oh, whoops. Derp. Setting them out, Brendan. X soldier. There it is. That's the full name. Okay. Let's watch this real fast. I just want to see. Did I return the full set? And then maybe we don't change it because I don't allow the name to change? Okay, that's 10 bytes. Last one's 255. Why is the last one 255? Character count. Oh, the character counts, not the byte count. Because we set all the bytes. Okay, never mind. I confused myself with my own code. Um, never mind. His name is now X Soldi. See? X Soldi. Uh, Plutonin. Someone mentioned it to me at one point. I'd never heard of it until they mentioned it. Uh, we actually had this mostly working. Uh, and someone was like, oh, is this like crowd control? And I was like, I have no idea, I don't know what that is, maybe? <laughs> um, um, I7, remove... Okay, um, yeah, we've got Soldi right now, uh, but hang on, because uh, you, you all might not know this, but um, we can actually do this, um, hang on a sec. Okay, um, so let's skip one line, uh, and let's set character count in our immediate window. Car count equals 10. So now if we get down to the bytes, um, we should have, there we go. So there's a full set right there, so... There we go, ex-soldier. Congratulations. Uh, so, people might not have known that, but um, this game actually does support a 10-letter character name for Cloud. Uh, Cloud can actually have 10 characters, because this is what his name is when the game starts out. Uh, so, it does actually support it. It works just fine. Um, kind of weird. But, hey. Uh, root Guy! Um... 
.NET Core 3 and C Sharp 8 uh, root guy, this is .NET Core 3 and C Sharp 8. So the answer is yes, we are excited about that. Um, uh, it's like Interactive 7, but they have multiple games. Uh, like A Link to the Past, they did a run. Uh, oh, that's uh, that's cool, Plutonin. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the, that's, that's essentially what we're doing here, because uh, I was intending to... Uh, leverage the same code that we built for this to run uh, not just for Final Fantasy 7 but to be able to connect to a lot of other games as well. Uh, I was thinking that we would do all the various JRPGs with these kinds of features uh, but we might do action games as well because there are a lot that you can tie into but yeah uh, that is that is probably they're doing the same thing that we are doing. I don't know if they're doing it the same way but uh, who knows. Okay. Let's move this. Uh, so, move letter mapping uh, to folder. The FF folder. Threaded Observable Collection. Um, I almost want to put that inside of settings, just because that's where it's used. So I'm going to put it there not because it makes sense to have it there, but because I think that's only used by settings. So I had to make a Threaded Observable Collection for that. So. A little bit of reorganization, getting things in the right places. Um, move, uh, threaded, observable, collection, to settings folder. Okay. Do, 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 do. Close that. Uh, what else needs a better place to live? What's in here? Oh, that. Yeah, we're not even using that yet, actually. There's the chat bot. Um, you know what? I almost want that to be, like, tied somewhere. Thanks, Rex. You know what? Instead of doing the polling, let's do this. Let's build a hub. We're going to build a hub for all the communication. So all data going to Sang is going to come through hubs. Uh, let's do it. So this is not going to be men menu hub copy. This is going to be um, party status hub, and party status hub is going to be party status hub, and it is going to be an i uh, party status notification. It's going to be one of those. And it is going to be uh, status changed. And let's take a look inside of our controllers folder for this. Um, so status controller, if you, no, not that one. The API controller, Brendan. Uh, a player status view model is what we want to have it return. So it is going to be status changed. Um, uh, 
Uh, what, uh, now to tie in border color to the unit tests of the project. Oh, <laughs> yes, Renee, that would be a funny one for uh, a software development stream to have uh, some kind of visual indicator on the uh, on the actual stream of what the current uh, test status is. Uh, oh, I was like, why can't I see it? Oh, Rex made it black because he's a punk. Uh, and I don't make it glow or anything like that. Thanks, Rex. Uh, there you go, buddy. You asked for that one. Uh, because we made it, like, completely black, you couldn't see any of the little indicators. I was like, did it, did it need refreshing, or what's the problem? No, Rex just made it black. There we go. Yeah, lime's not bad in this quantity. Lime is really bad in, in this quantity. That's terrible in lime. Never do that. Don't. Just just no. You're not you're not you're not being funny. <laughs> Actually it's kinda of funny. <laughs> Alright, so Yeah, it's not running, Rex. You can't actually do it. Um, okay, so menu hub emitter, we're going to copy that as well, and this is going to be the party status hub emitter, party status hub emitter, and it is going to be a One of these and one of these, and then this is going to be uh, party status hub. Like that. That's clearly not what it's going to call. Uh, and it needs to be. Let's jump up here. Public interface uh, I that. That will be a task with um, show new status and it is going to take in um, one of these party status let's put this in its own file so that'll be our uh, party status hub emitter up here. I party status hub emitter, like that. Uh, which now, when I implement the missing member, is going to give me this one. And we'll say return. Uh, I'll change the name of that context in a second. Clients all status changed, and we're going to say party status. I'm going to nuke this, and the menu hub context needs a rename. So let's go ahead and rename this from menu hub context to um, party status hub context. Yep, rename the related symbol, please. There we go. Now that should build, and this uh, has provided us with a nice type safe check of this. Uh, oh, Rex, I'll uh, I'll show you in a bit. I'll uh, I'll turn the thing back on. So that has created the new hub that we can use. So um, if you are not familiar with uh, SignalR, that's what these hubs are that we're using. SignalR uh, allows us to do uh, a convenient socket connection uh, with um, uh, with uh, bet between our web server and the browser connected to it. So. Um, Give me one second just to get rid of that name I don't want in here. So we renamed Cloud back to Brendan. Uh, and we'll bring up this as well. And we'll be over here. Let's set the menu to the default color. And now, uh, if we do menu lime, 
This is what Rex was asking for. Uh, menu live? No. Um, menu lime. That's lime, which we're not going to keep that on the screen very long. We're going to change off of that almost immediately. But that was lime, so if you if you if you were watching, that's uh, that's the color that uh, that Rex was voting for. In that, it is it is terrible. It is it is just painful color palette. Um, but it uh, it does work. Oh yes, uh, it is lime is absolutely just beautiful, wonderful color. It's funny because everybody thinks that like menu white is going to be the worst one. They're always like, oh, white's going to be terrible. And I mean, white's bad, but lime is oh so much worse. Because uh, everybody thinks white, you're not going to be able to read it. And it's hard to read, but it is nothing compared to, to lime. Just because it's just piercingly bright. Uh, but the cool thing is so many other color palettes work and are really nice. Uh... Yeah, and these are also terrible. Thanks, Root Guy. Yeah, that's, 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 yeah. Yeah, we'll keep that for a couple of seconds. <laughs> so, you can get some truly horrific colors in there if you really want to try for it. Um, okay, turning that off for now. Hang on a sec. Okay, uh, so that's a reasonable change, getting that set up. Let's go ahead and um, go to our web application and go to those views. So the status view is right here. And in this page, uh, we have so first off, here's our signal, our connection. Um, let's, uh, we would have to make a second connection to connect to the other hub, unless we, unless we just made a general, ooh, you know, we could just make a general hub that has both. Um, let's make it a general hub that has both instead of doing separate connections for it. Cause I think, let's just call it the, um, just call it the status hub instead of that we'll just make it the status hub status um, status status that's no longer party status that is just status 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 um, actually that one is party status Which means that that is party status changed that uh, that reference can come back um, let's go to the menu hub um, we'll say color changed that is something that's going on this one so there's color changed okay so it is a status notification not one of these so we can get rid of the menu hub completely then Uh, the menu hub emitter uh, is going to have this on it. Uh, by that I mean the the status uh, hub emitter is going to have this one. Uh, I know I need to rename the files. I will get to that. Uh, give me a second. So that stat that's status. It's not party. It's just status now. This is I status notification. That is I status notification. Um, now the challenge is that we need to go to this hub emitter, um, because this is now party status changed, because that one had to be, um, and this is no longer going to be called that. Let's go to the emitter, which is inside of our core project, inside of the emitters folder. Uh, this is now the I status emitter, and this is, uh, show new party status right there and that lines up again so let's go to the other emitter which is going to have this one so it'll be there which 
means we no longer need the menu hub emitter from here either. Let's rename this file. It's just the I status hub emitter. Um, this one. Uh, put the missing reference to show new colors. Yep, okay, that's correct. Um, it's going to pull it from... So that's no longer the party status hub. This is just the status hub. So that's an S for status, S for status, and then this is also getting a quick rename. That's status as well, which means that that one. Um, color translator. System dot drawing. Okay, I got the correct color translator. I just wanted to check here and make sure I got the right one. Okay, rename these files. Okay, so now in startup, uh, at the endpoints, we have menu hub, and this is supposed to be status hub. And we'll call this status hub. So now instead of uh, in our signal R, instead of connecting to menu hub, we'll connect to status hub, and then we can respond both to um, the color changed as well as the party status changed. So we can actually respond to both of these down here. Uh, so we can say uh, on uh, party status changed as well. So that means uh, that um, we can create a little method uh, and we'll call it on that. Uh, and by method, I of course mean function. And we'll call that status. Um, we'll say party status. Party status. Oops, comma, comma, comma. Uh, I'm a I'm a comma chameleon. Uh, just just so we're clear. Uh, okay, so D is the data, so we'll call it D for now, because that seems to be what we're calling this thing. Okay. Um, Okay, I think that's the change. Just push app party. So that puts all the characters into data on here. Now I'm not 100% that, that, that everything's correct. We might need to do a lot of thises um, for things that are actually data. So data party windows. Do, are we accessing data in this? Be setting data party windows. What are they setting? Characters? Okay, showed you. What are you doing? So you're pushing on the characters. App. Ah, okay. So you're saying app dot part. Uh, so app dot parties. Okay, so he's app dotting. Uh, cause this is app. Uh, so we need to say this instead of app, but that's fine. So we'll change the this the the apps to this is. What? This? Um, this? Let's do a quick replace with it. App turns into this. This? 
Uh, and we're outside of the code. Alright, let's try it. Let's see if I broke anything. Cross fingers, here's the crazy check. Oh, builders, I left something somewhere. Uh, I menu hub emitter. Um, wait, what? I menu color X. Oh, no, it's a. Uh, I status hub emitter is now what this is. Status hub emitter. So there we go. Um, Copper Beardy, have a good crash on your sofa. Once this builds, we're going to run it and see if we uh, actually get our data. Uh, yep, we would need to do this. Um, status hub emitter. There we go. All right, let's do this. What you got for me? So first off, okay, apps, uh, apps running all right. Let's load up this. Uh, wait, what? Um, Oh, I'm not I'm not doing it yet. I'm not doing anything with it. So it's not loading data yet, so that's why it's showing the wrong characters. Um, menu colors should still be wired up though, right? Yes. Menu colors are still wired up, so that's that's positive. Okay, so we haven't broken menu colors. What we need to do now is um, our emitter that we're using. So inside of here, notice that I pass in the emitter like this. I need to do the same thing inside of the Seng program. So initialize that from the constructor. Actually, let's see if it respects order. Nope. Thought it might. Okay, so there's where we're putting it. So this is the status hub emitter. And what we're going to do is inside of um, update status from page. So down here, um, so this is after we've updated all of the, uh, the status stuff. So this is updating all the information, basically. Uh, we're then going to just ping it and be like, hey, done. Um, show new party status and it's going to be party status view model. So every time after we update we'll just spit it out to it. Now later on we can do this more advanced way so we only tell it about things that actually changed instead of just telling it about you know the new update every time we run. So the way it was working before is uh, the web app was asking the server three times a second hey do you have any updates and the server was asking the game every um, Five hundred every uh, every you know half second, so twice a second, uh, for any updates. And so, on average, you know it's taking like less than a second to get that information. Uh, but now what we're going to do is twice every second we're just going to update that that page. So it's just going to get that message every single time, uh, in theory, uh, if we wired it up right. Which, um, based on not seeing it here, I'm. Betting we're getting an error on this page. Um, yeah, so we're getting an undefined value on this. Cannot read property time active of undefined. So this value is uh, so data is coming back undefined. D dot data. Oh, because I bet dot data because it was coming out of the package. So yep, I know the problem. I think we don't even need dot data. I think that is um, just extra now. 
So let's replace d dot data with uh, d d dot d dot data dot with d d dot. Let's see how that works. Does that work any better? Let's try it. So program is active. Run this. Ooh, hey, look at that. We're pulling the data. So there we go. We're now pulling that with signal R. So that is nice. Check that out. That is a victory right there. Um, we, ooh, we didn't get our fave icon. We need to do that. So likely what we need to do now, uh, because what I'm seeing here is um, when the page loads, so if we do a refresh, it loads in with the wrong data and then doesn't update until something connects and tells it that, uh, that the data has changed and we need to show something else. Uh, I want to either have this load with a page that says that it's waiting for data uh, instead of having just placeholders in there, um, or what we want to do is, uh, what, or maybe in addition to, uh, make it so that it automatically makes a request for the data, uh, you know, request to the server for the data when it first starts to just give it an extra try. But you can see that the other ones line in and then and then it's immediately sent uh, with a web socket. So it knows that it knows all about all these changes right away. So now we are going to the default menu color and then we can go to random menu colors. So very, very nice. Uh, wired wired together pretty well. Uh, okay, so that is um, receive um, signal. Uh, so signal R uh, to saying instead of polling. Okay, so instead of polling twice, now let me see, do I need to restart that bot before we, uh, no I don't, fantastic, ha <laughs> ha, okay, uh, so a couple of things I want to mention, if you are here and have enjoyed the stream at all, be sure to click that follow button so you get notified when we go live, uh, some of our episodes are more exciting than others, this was a much less exciting one, uh, but I still had fun with it. Uh, hopefully you did as well. Uh, if you are interested in chatting further with me or any of the other uh, people that are here uh, in the Dev Chatter community, uh, be sure to click that button and hop on over to our Discord. Uh, there's a link in the chat as well as down below. Uh, and that goes for whether you're watching this here live with us right now or whether you're watching a recording of this because there are recordings of this available here on Twitch in the video section uh, as well as over in our YouTube channel. Uh, did I mention our YouTube channel? Because it's over at youtube.com slash c slash devchatter. If you're over there, hello person in the future. You're probably like, I don't know, a week ahead in the future. But um, either way, I hope you're having a great day and uh, enjoying uh, whatever it is you're doing. Hopefully the weather's nice and that sort of thing. So uh, in the future, you know, we will always assume the future is going to be a nice, bright, wonderful place. Okay, so um, I also want to uh, point people over at our GitHub at github.com slash devchatter where most of the projects that we work on are available, publicly accessible uh, for all of you to check out. Uh, I will mention that right now that is not the case for this project, though we are soon going to be making it live and available there. So uh, if you want to, you can actually follow uh, me for updates uh, on my GitHub uh, I don't know if you know that you can actually follow people on GitHub and, and you can like see the stuff that they're building. So uh, if you are waiting for this to go live so you can see the code for how we built this, that is a great way to do that. Uh, and lastly, I will toss a link to my Twitter over there as well. Uh, why do you care if the future is a nice place? We will never actually be in the future. Yes, but uh, at one point, uh, Wheatlaw, that future will be my present. And because of that, I do hope it is nice because I always want my present, at whatever moment that is, to be nice. Uh, yours too, by the way. So, um, I mentioned all those things, I mentioned all that stuff. Uh, if you were waiting for our Dev Chatter Basics episode to go live today, I will let you know that I do have a Dev Chatter Basics episode recorded uh, talking about Link. Uh, and uh, it is not completely edited. I've only edited about uh, like the first five minutes of it. 
Uh, I was shooting for a 15 to 20 minute episode uh, for Link because it is a larger concept. Sadly, I recorded over 30 minutes of an episode, so... I'm going to be doing a lot of editing to make that uh, hopefully either shorter or maybe I'll just clean up the whole section and uh, it'll be that long. So we'll see how that goes. If you don't know what Dev Chatter Basics is, be sure to go to our YouTube channel uh, where you will find our episodes that are uh, they're scripted, recorded, like episodes talking about a concept that we think it is important for everyone to know. So Dev Chatter Basics, uh, if you are interested in doing any coding in C Sharp, uh, whether your beginner or more advanced, feel free to check out those videos as I think you'll probably enjoy them. Either way, uh, I also want to make sure that I mention to everyone, uh, we will not be doing our Monday and Tuesday streams this week, uh, but I should see everyone for our regular Thursday stream, uh, which will be Thursday the 1st of August. So uh, enjoy the rest of your July, everyone. Uh, have a lot of fun, and we will see you next time. Happy coding, everyone. Bye.